Good day, everybody. This is Dr. Sanjay Sani, our professor department chair. So this is going to be a demonstration of the anterior compartment of the leg and the dorsum of the foot. This is the right side, the cadaver is supine, I'm standing on the right side, the camera person is on the right side. So let's take a look at this muscle here. This much is the anterior compartment of the leg. So where exactly is it located? It is located between the anterior border of the tibia here and the anterior intramuscular septum which you can see here. So exactly between these two is the anterior compartment. So let's take a look at the muscles first and then we shall mention the clinical correlations. This muscle that we see here, this is the longest and the most important muscle of the anterior compartment. This is the tibialis anterior. It takes origin from the front of the interosseous membrane and the adjacent sides of the tibia and the tendon is a strong, stout, powerful tendon which goes to the medial side of the foot and it gets inserted onto the medial side of the base of the first metatarsal and the medial cuneiform. What does it do? When it pulls, it causes dorsiflexion of the foot and it also causes inversion of the foot and we can see that happening here. The next muscle that we see immediately after that is this one here. This is the extensor hallucis longus. Extensor hallucis longus tendon, it goes, gets inserted onto the distal phalanx of the great toe. Hallucis means great toe. The muscle immediately after that is this one here, which I have lifted. This is the extensor digitorum longus, and we can see this is the muscle here. The extensor digitorum longus splits into four tendons, and each of them go to the distal phalanx of the second, third, fourth, and fifth toes. And finally, on the extreme lateral aspect, we can see one more smaller muscle, which is almost a part of the same muscle. But it's got a different insertion and a different action. And if you look very closely, you'll find that the insertion is slightly hatched here. This is the fibularis tertius muscle, which gets inserted onto the dorsum of the tuberosity of the fifth metatarsal bone. The action of the fibularis tertius is it's a weak everter of the foot. The action of all the other tendons, extensor digitorum longus, extensor hallucis longus, is extension of the toes. All these muscles of the anterior compartment, they are supplied by the deep fibular nerve, which I'm going to show you just a little later. Before that, I want to draw your attention to something. If you notice, when I pull on these tendons, the tendons stand up. Why are they standing up? This is called bow stringing of the tendons. In a normal person, in a living person, this bow stringing is avoided by means of a powerful extension of the crural fascia, which is attached like this, and we have removed it here. That crural fascia is, that thickened portion of the crural fascia here has got a separate name. It is called the extensor retinaculum. Actually, there are two pieces of extensor retinaculum. There's a superior extensor retinaculum, and there's an inferior extensor retinaculum, which is Y-shaped. And that is the one which holds the tendons down to prevent from bow stringing. And passing through each, under each of these extensor retinaculum, there were small tunnels, which were lined by synovial membrane, which also we have removed. And that was enclosing all these tendons to prevent friction. So removing the extensor retinaculum has caused this bow stringing. Now let me show you something more important. The neurovascular structures. If you take a look here, between the tibialis anterior and the extensor hallucis longus, this is the neurovascular structure which I have picked up. This is the anterior tibial artery, the vena comitante is of the anterior tibial artery, and the deep fibular nerve. Let's take one, one by one. The anterior tibial artery is the smaller terminal division of the popliteal artery. Popliteal artery divides under the solial arch, and a branch goes through the interosseous membrane and comes down as the anterior interosseous artery. And you can see these blue structures around it. These are the venae comitantes, which are the accompanying veins of the anterior tibial artery. The anterior tibial artery runs in front of the anterior interosseous membrane, and this gives, we can see this branch here, this is a medial malleolar branch. It is supposed to give a lateral malleolar branch. It also gives an anterior tibial recurrent, which you cannot see, and then it goes under the extensor retinaculum, and after that, it becomes known as the dorsalis pedis artery. And as the dorsal spedius artery, it runs just lateral to the tendon of the extensor hallucis longus. And this is where we can feel its pulsation exactly where my finger is located. This dorsal spedius artery gives 
a medial tarsal branch, a lateral tarsal branch, and an arcuate branch, which we cannot see here. So this is the tarsalis medius, continuation of the anterior tibial. Now let's take a look at the nerve. This is the deep fibular nerve. Where did the deep fibular nerve come from? The deep fibular nerve came from the common fibular nerve, which went behind the head of the fibula. It wound around the neck of the fibula, and then divided into a deep fibular branch and a superficial fibular branch. The deep fibular branch comes to the anterior compartment, and this nerve is the one which supplies all the muscles of the anterior compartment. Injury to this deep fibular nerve will produce paralysis of all the muscles in the anterior compartment, and the most important clinical correlation will be paralysis of the tibialis anterior, which will cause foot drop, which is going to be a very serious disability. To continue with the deep fibular nerve, the, at the place where the deep fibular nerve crosses under the extensor retinaculum, it can get entrapped and that is called ski boot syndrome. And that will produce weakness of the muscles on the dorsum of the foot and loss of sensation in exactly this interdigital cleft. Which are the muscles in the dorsum of the foot which are supplied by the deep fibular nerve? To understand that, let's again take a look at these long extensor tendons. I have lifted up the long extensor tendons. And if you look very carefully, under each of these long extensor tendons, there is a smaller tendon. For example, under the extensor hallucis longus, we can see a smaller tendon here. This is a separate muscle which we can see here. This is the extensor hallucis brevis, which runs on the lateral to the main tendon and gets inserted onto the middle phalanx. Similarly, under the extensor digitorum longus, if you look carefully, we can see smaller tendons. We can see a tendon here. We can see another tendon here. We can see another tendon here and another tendon here. These are the tendons of another small muscle here, which is called the extensor digitorum brevis. All these tendons get inserted under the longest tendon in the middle phalanx, while the longest tendon continues to the distal phalanx. So these two muscles, the extensor hallucis brevis and the extensor digitorum brevis, they are supplied by the deep fibular nerve. So in ski boot syndrome, these small muscles will get weak and the person will have difficulty or weakness of extensors of the digits. Now let me mention something, a clinical correlation pertaining to the anterior compartment itself. These muscles were covered by a tough fascia, which is called the crural fascia. And we have removed most of it, just a little bit of the remnant is present here. This is the crural fascia. And I told you, the anterior compartment muscles are located between the crural fascia and the anterior intramuscular septum. If there is any blunt trauma, then there can be swelling of these muscles or if there is repeated use of these muscles, then also there can be some swelling up and that can produce what is known as shin splint. And that is the time when we should rest. If not, or if the trauma is very severe, or if there is repetitive usage of these muscles, then the muscles in the anterior compartment, they can swell up. And when they swell up, they can produce what is known as anterior compartment syndrome. And what will happen? First, it will compress the venae committantes, the nerves, the veins. Then it will compress the artery and it will compress the nerve and can produce jeopardization of the blood supply to the distal aspect of the limbs. So that anterior compartment syndrome is potentially very serious and if we suspect such a thing, the first step will be to cut open the deep fascia like this. The process is called fasciotomy and the also called facial decompression. So this is about the anterior compartment and the dorsum of the foot. And before I conclude, I need to show you one more thing. Take a look at this structure here. This is the termination of the superficial fibular nerve. We have not yet dissected out the lateral compartment. As I told you, the common fibular nerve divides into a deep fibular nerve and a superficial fibular nerve. The superficial fibular nerve runs in the lateral compartment, which is here, supplies the fibularis longus and the fibularis brevis. And after that, it pierces through the deep fascia, which you can see it's piercing and then it continues as a cutaneous nerve. And as a cutaneous nerve, this runs like this over the extensor retinaculum, like my finger is going, and it supplies the entire skin of the dorsum of the foot and all the dorsum of the toes, except the first interdigital cleft. So we can see the termination of the superficial fibular nerve. So these are the structures which I wanted to draw your attention to in the dorsum of the foot and the anterior compartment of the leg. Thank you very much for watching. Dr. Sanjay Sanyal signing out.
If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Mr. Solomon is the camera person. Have a nice day. Please like and subscribe.